This is the tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but you don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. You hear me? It is very dangerous. Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was a very naughty bunny, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First, he ate some lettuces, and then some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But, round the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees, planting out young cabbages. But he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling, Stop, thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he may have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons. They were quite new. Peter thought he would give up and he would be stuck forever. He shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to help him. Just as Peter Rabbit got free, Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop over the top of Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his new jacket behind him. Quickly, Peter rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it didn't have so much water in it. Splash! Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each one. At that moment, Peter sneezed. Achoo! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. He quickly tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of the window, knocking over three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was getting tired of running after Peter Rabbit. So he stopped chasing Peter Rabbit and went back to work. Peter sat down to rest. <sighs> He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had no idea which way to go to get home. Also, he was feeling very wet and damp after sitting in the watering can. After some time, he began to wander about, going hippity hippity hop, looking around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her which way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him and Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more confused. Suddenly, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his watering cans. 
a white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, and now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a rake. Scratch, 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 scratch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, but as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing some onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside of the garden. Peter never stopped running until he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost. I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea and she gave a dose of it to Peter. But Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The End <laughs>